the soul would have no rainbow, had the eyes no tears. Most people face situations where they have to fight back the tears. But there are people who would never have to attempt that. You guessed it right. It's the dry eye syndrome or disease. Keratoconjunctivitis sicca or dysfunctional tear syndrome or dry eye has been defined as a disorder of the tear film. Here, the deficiency of tears or excessive tear evaporation causes damage to the interpalpable ocular surface, causing ocular discomfort. To be more precise, dry eye is recognized as a disturbance of the lacrimal functional unit. The lacrimal functional unit is an integrated system comprising of the lacrimal glands, ocular surface comprising cornea, conjunctiva, and meibomian glands, eyelids, and the sensory and motor nerves that connect them. Let us see what the tear film covering the ocular surface is made up of. The tear film is made up of three intertwined layers. A superficial thin lipid layer of 0.11 microns produced by the meibomian glands. A middle thick aqueous layer of 7 microns produced by the main lacrimal glands as well as the accessory lacrimal glands of Krauss and Wolfring. And the innermost hydrophilic mucin layer produced by both the conjunctiva goblet cells and the ocular surface epithelium. Functions of the lipid layer include slowing tear evaporation, enhancing tear film spreading, providing a smooth optical surface, preventing contamination of the tear film by skin lipids, preventing overflow of tears in the absence of excessive reflex tearing, and sealing the opposed lid margins during sleep. Let us now move on to the diagnosis and causes of this disease. Diagnosis of dry eye disease is primarily based on assessment of symptoms and the symptoms caused by deficiency of tear film like soreness and itching may worsen as the day progresses. Symptoms may also be exacerbated by factors such as low humidity, smoky environments and prolonged use of the eyes. The cause of dry eye disease is also the basis of its classification. The International Dry Eye Workshop, DUES, recently developed a three-part classification of dry eye based on etiology, mechanisms and disease stage. It is mainly classified as aqueous deficient or evaporative. Aqueous deficient dry eye disease can be classified as Sjogren or non-Sjogren syndrome. Primary Sjogren syndrome is an autoimmune disorder in which the lacrimal and salivary glands are infiltrated by activated T cells, resulting in symptoms of dry eye and dry mouth. Secondary Sjogren syndrome is Sjogren syndrome associated with other autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus erythematosus. Non-Sjogren aqueous deficient dry eye disease can result from lacrimal gland insufficiency, various etiologies, lacrimal duct obstruction or reflex hyposecretion. Evaporative dry eye disease also has various causes including meibomian gland disease, eyelid aperture disorders or lid and globe incongruity, blink disorders and ocular surface disorders. The most common cause is meibomian gland dysfunction, a condition of meibomian gland obstruction. The International Dry Eye Workshop has also modified an existing classification on the basis of severity to arrive at a classification that you can see on your screen. Certain dry eye diseases are due to extrinsic factors like use of contact lens, topical drugs and preservatives, LASIK or ocular surface disease, frequent use more than four to six times daily of preserved eye drops including glaucoma medications and artificial tears may contribute to dry eye. Management of dry eye disease depends on the causes and severity of the dry eye syndrome. Artificial tear is used to replenish the deficient aqueous layer of the tear film 
and to dilute the cytokines necessary to substantiate the disease. If the tear deficiency is severe, then more viscous forms such as eye gel or even ointment can be used to maintain better and longer ocular protection. Use of topical steroids or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications is sometimes useful when there is an inflammation. For more severe disease, topical immunomodulating drugs such as cyclosporine A drops may be necessary. Autologous serum containing additional growth factors compared to artificial tear may help in epithelial healing. Severe dry eye diseases with corneal complications may warrant surgical intervention such as punctal occlusion. In case of lacrimal puncta, temporary collagen plugs may be used. Permanent punctal occlusion can also be performed using local anesthetics to permanently save the tear from draining through the tear ducts and canaliculi. For patients with dry eyes secondary to connective tissue diseases, it is important to work with physicians to optimize treatment for their systemic diseases.